Hello, Dan here from howtomechatronics.com. In this video, we will learn what is cycloidal drive, how it works, explain how to design our own model and 3D print it so we can see it in real life and better understand how it works. A cycloidal drive is a unique type of speed reducer which provides a very high reduction ratio with compact but robust design. Compared to conventional gear drives like SPAR or Planetary, it can achieve much higher reduction ratios of up to 10 times in the same space or stage. In addition to that, it features virtually zero backlash, higher load capacity, rigidity and high efficiency of up to 90%. These properties make the cycloidal drives suitable for many applications where positioning accuracy and performance are important such as robotics, machine tools, manufacturing equipment and so on. Let's take a look now what's inside and how a cycloidal drive works. A cycloidal drive is composed of five main components, a high-speed input shaft, an eccentric bearing or cycloidal cam, two cycloidal discs or cam followers, a ring gear with pins and rollers and a slow-speed output shaft with pins and rollers. The input shaft drives the eccentric bearing and the eccentric bearing drives the cycloidal disc around the internal circumference of the ring gear housing. The eccentric motion makes the cycloidal disc's teeth or lobes to engage with the rollers of the ring gear housing in a way that they produce reverse rotation at a reduced speed. If we take a closer look here we can see how the eccentric bearing is actually pushing the cycloidal disc against the ring gear rollers. Because of the unique disc shape and the position relative to the ring gear rollers, we can see that as the eccentric bearing progresses, the disc lobes in front of the rotation won't be able to pass or jump to the next ring gear roller, but instead it will slip or roll backward. This behavior is what actually causes the reverse rotation of the discs. In general, there are one less cycloidal lobe on the disc compared to the number of rollers on the ring gear housing. This makes for one full rotation of the eccentric bearing the cycloidal disc to move only a distance of one lobe. From this we can see that the reduction ratio depends solely on the number of rollers on the ring gear. For example, here we have 12 rollers on the ring gear, which means 11 lobes on the cycloidal disc. And that's a ratio of 11 to 1 or 11 times slower output speed. The reduced rotation is transmitted to the output shaft pins through the holes of the cycloidal discs. There are two cycloidal discs placed 180 degrees out of phase in order to compensate the unbalanced forces caused by the eccentric motion and provide smoother operation at higher speeds. The name cycloidal drive comes from the profile of the disc which in turn comes from a cycloid. But more on that in the next section of the video where we will design our own cycloidal drive. So now as we know how a cycloidal drive works, we can move on with designing our own model which we will be able to 3D print it. If we try to print this demo example, it might work, but it will fail quickly as the 3D printing material is not strong enough to withstand the forces and friction that appear in the gearbox. The critical parts here are the rollers, that are usually bushings, which is a great option if the materials are metal, but with a PLA material we will have to use ball bearings instead. Having that in mind, here's the cycloidal drive that I designed and uses ball bearings for the rollers. When designing a cycloidal drive, there are four main input parameters that define its size and shape, and that's the ring gear radius, its roller radius, the number of these rollers and the eccentricity. Before I explain my approach of designing this gearbox, let me give a shout out to SolidWorks for sponsoring this video. Have you heard about the 3D Experience World, an annual event organized by SolidWorks? 3D Experience World 2022 brings a vibrant community of designers, engineers, entrepreneurs and makers together to learn, meet one another share knowledge together on newest technologies and best practices. This year you can experience the event both virtually and in person, live in Atlanta, Georgia. In both settings you will be able to enjoy the networking opportunities, technical how-to sessions, new technology announcements and much more. 
It's an awesome way to break into the trades or sharpen your skills if you are already in the industry. Be sure to register today at solidworks.com slash 3dxw2020 underscore how to make and use code 3dxw2020 how to make to get 50% off your in-person conference pass. If you are not able to travel to Atlanta, you can attend virtually for free. Personally, I'm looking forward for this awesome event. Don't forget to check the links in the description and register today. Once again, big thanks to SolidWorks for sponsoring educational content like this. Alright, so let's get back to topic now and explain my approach of designing this gearbox. The first thing that I defined was that I wanted 15 to 1 reduction ratio for this gearbox, which meant that I needed 16 ring gear rollers. So I draw a sketch in SOLIDWORKS with 16 rollers around the circle. Then I chose to use bearings for the rollers with 13mm outer diameter. Now according to these two parameters I was able to define what size should the ring gear pitch diameter be. I set it to 90mm. The eccentricity value should be smaller than half of the roller diameter and I chose to use a value of 1.5mm. Now that I have the four main input parameters, we can draw the shape or the profile of the cycloidal disc. As I mentioned, the disc profile comes from a cycloid, which is a curve traced by a point on a circle as it rolls along a straight line without slipping, or its variation, an epicycloid, which is traced when rolling on a circumference of a circle. There's another variation called epitrochoid, where the tracing point is at a distance from the center of the exterior circle and that's what the cycloidal disc profile is actually based on. For drawing such a curve we can use these parametric equations here, but there are also other parameters to include in them, such as the roller's diameter and the eccentricity. This complicates the things a little bit. But luckily there was a great document written by Omar Yunis for the SOLIDWORKS education blog where he combines all of these parameters in a single X and Y parametric equations. Now in order to generate the profile we can simply use the SOLIDWORKS equation driven curve tool, insert the two equations appropriately and that will generate the cycloidal disk profile. Of course for the input parameters we should insert our values. Also note that the curve won't be generated if the t parameters are from 0 to 2 pi or 360 degrees. So we need to set the t2 parameter a little bit short of 2 pi and then generate the curve with a small gap which we can connect later using a simple spline. Now that we have the main parameters for our cycloidal drive defined, the rest is just finding technical solutions for how everything will be connected. Again, considering that we are using not so strong 3D printing material, I designed the shafts of the rollers to be supported on both sides, as well as the input shaft and the output shaft. The input shaft is made of several sections and supported with two bearings within the output shaft. The output shaft is also supported with two bearings within the housing. So to recap the work of this gearbox, the input from the motor is transmitted to the eccentric input shaft which drives the cycloidal disc around the gear ring. The produced reverse motion of the cycloidal disc is transmitted to the output shaft through the output shaft rollers. And that's it, now let's 3D print it and see how it works in real life. You can find and download the 3D model as well as the STL files needed for 3D printing the parts on the website article. When 3D printing the parts it's important to use the whole horizontal expansion feature in your slicing software. Usually the holes of 3D printed parts come smaller than the original size, so with this feature we can compensate for that and get accurate dimensions which is very important for these parts. I set mine to 0.07mm and the horizontal expansion feature which can compensate for the outer dimensions of the parts to 0.02mm. Of course you should do some test prints to see if that values will give you the best result on your 3D printer. So here are all of the 3D printed parts as well as the bearings and the bolts needed for assembling the cycloidal drive. I started with inserting the ring gear pins to the housing. These pins accommodate the ring gear rollers or the bearings but they are just 6mm in diameter. I wasn't sure whether they were strong enough not to break under the load of the cycloidal disc. 
Therefore I made them hollow and inserted into them 3mm metal shafts which I had laying around. This way the pins will be strong enough for sure. Of course there are smarter solutions for this. For example we could use M6 bolts instead, but what I don't like about this is that the M6 bolts are slightly smaller than 6mm, so the bearing would wobble. Ideally we could use a proper 6mm rod, which is actually easy available to buy even with this particular size of 35mm. I will put links to them as well as all other components needed for this gearbox on the website article. Once we have all the pins in place, we can insert the bearings in this order. A 7mm distance ring, a bearing, then 3mm distance ring, a bearing and another 7mm distance ring. The cycloidal disc should now fit in this ring gear that we created and if we try to rotate the disc with an eccentric motion by pushing it to the sides while rotating, the disc should start rotating reversely. Next we can assemble the input shaft which is made of 4 sections. In each section we need to place a bearing and some distance rings and because of the eccentricity we won't be able to do that unless the shaft is made in sections. For connecting the sections together I am using two M3 bolts which go through all of them. We can note here that the holes for these M3 bolts are made slightly smaller than the M3 bolt so that the bolt will make a thread into them and have tighter fit. Here's how the shaft should look like when assembled, but I actually had to insert the cycloidal disc as well as now I couldn't do it. So I disassembled it and assembled it again with the disc inserted as well. I continued with assembling the output shaft. Here we need to install the output rollers or bearings and we do that in similar way as shown for the ring gear rollers. A 6mm pin with 13mm bearings and some distance rings inserted through some 20mm long M3 bolts. When inserting these output rollers through the openings of the cycloidal disc, it's important to position the two discs relative to each other 180 degrees out of face. To help with this I made a small holes on both discs 180 degrees out of face, so we just have to match them and we are good to insert the rollers through. Please note that this is a bit tight fit, but if the holes dimensions are accurate, we will be able to fit them. Now we can secure these pins to the other flange on the other side, but for that purpose first we need to install some threaded inserts into the flange. I am using threaded inserts in order to make the whole assembly more compact. So once the input and the output shaft are assembled together, we can install the whole assembly into the housing through a bearing with 47mm outer diameter. Then we can install one more bearing like this in the front of the shaft and insert the housing lid in place. This is also a tight fit as all 16 pins should fit in their housing lid slots, so we probably have to use a bit of force to insert the lid in place. On the back side of the housing I installed some M4 threaded inserts and then secure the lid and the housing together with some 40mm long M4 bolts. And that's it, if it's fair to say, just take a look at this beauty. I really like how this cycloidal drive turned out, clean design with nothing popping out of it. Nevertheless, now let's attach a motor to it and see how it will work. At the back side of the input shaft, I installed few more threaded inserts so I can easily attach various shaft couplers to it. For testing this gearbox I will use a NEMA 17 stepper motor, so I attached a suitable 3D printed shaft coupler to the input shaft. I secured the stepper to a 3D printed mounting bracket and inserted the motor shaft into the coupler and secured the mounting bracket to the housing. One last thing is to install some threaded inserts at the front of the output shaft so we can attach things to it. Here's the final appearance of this cycloidal drive, in combination with a NEMA 17 stepper motor, but of course we can use any other type of motor here. And there we have it in motion. To be honest I was really surprised how smooth the output of this gearbox turned out. From the front we can see both the input and the output shaft rotating at the same time, in opposite direction and with speed difference of 15 to 1. I was also able to run the gearbox without the front lid 
and so we can see everything explained previously in action. The motion of this cycloidal drive is simply mesmerizing. At the end I made some tests to check the gearbox performance. One more thing to note here is that the cycloidal drive is also back drivable, which can be a good feature to have for some applications. So here I'm measuring the force this gearbox can produce at a distance of 10 cm. I got a reading of around 26 newtons, which translated to torque is about 260 newton centimeters. And this NEMA 17 stepper motors, which is 34 centimeters long, is rated at 26 newton centimeters. That means that we've got torque increase of around 10 times with this cycloidal drive. That's efficiency of around 66% considering that the reduction ratio is 15 to 1 and in ideal conditions we should get 15 times torque increase. Nevertheless, that's still a great result considering that everything is 3D printed with a budget 3D printer and the parts are not that accurate as we could get it with some pro printers or CNC machines in case of all metal gearbox. I also made some accuracy tests which also showed good results. I would definitely use this type of gearbox in future videos when making some robotics projects. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe and for more tutorials and projects visit howtomechatronics.com.